Okay, I realized looking at the video and I'm editing, it's kind of a mess when you're looking in that battery box. So let me see if I can break this down just a little bit easier for you. Actually, let me back up a second. What I'm saying in the video makes a lot of sense. If this is a temporary system for you, if you're looking at it like, you know what, maybe one time a year, you might need to make your own power after a storm that might last you for a week or two, okay? What I would recommend, if you did not have a huge amount of money, go buy a generator first. You can buy a generator for three or $400. If you can afford that, great. If not, I had some other ideas in the video. If you have a car, you can probably at least use your car to recharge your cell phone, okay? So start with what you got and what you can afford. Don't break the bank on this. This is just some ideas that might get you through a rough week, okay? So if you've got limited money, and this is something you would only use once in a while, and you don't live in an apartment. This is the other thing is you really can't have a generator in your apartment, okay? So you could get a little generator, could run at least your deep freeze, charge your phones, charge your laptop. Maybe you could watch TV at night, okay? And I'll, I'll, let me break this down in the order that I think would make the most sense for a temporary situ situation. If you, ha if you get the generator first, the first thing you're going to realize is generators are noisy. So you don't want to have it running all the time. Unless you absolutely need your freezer to stay frozen for a few days. Okay. Then, yeah, it's hard to beat the generator. But let's say you get the generator first. Then you go get a decent battery charger and you get at least one battery, okay? Now, if you get a battery for this, not for anything else, make it a deep cycle battery. This is different from the battery that starts your car. It still has 12 volts, but it's made for using a long continuous load. The battery in your car is good for starting your car for 30 seconds and then it can recharge quickly. The deep cycle battery could run your deep freeze for an hour or two and then be recharged the next day. So it's, it's just a different kind of battery. It still puts out 12 volts. So what I would say, get the generator first, get a deep cycle battery and a battery charger. Then look into a power inverter. The inverter will take the 12 volt battery and turn it into house power. Now these can be anything from 100 watts to many thousands of watts, okay? If this is for temporary use only, I would say get something like 1,000 or 2,000 watts. That'll cover most of your loads, at least for a little while, okay? If you need it to last longer, you need more batteries. My system here, I've got four of these batteries that cost about 100 to $120 a piece, okay? So my system now, I've got the generator, about $400. I've got four of these batteries that were over $100 a piece. I've got the battery charger that was Harbor Freight, uh, maybe $30. I've got two inverters. Uh, they're about $150 a piece. Okay, that's my basic system. Now, if you've got that covered, and if you have a garage or a place to store this stuff, you could have the generator, a battery charger and a couple of batteries sitting off in the corner and they would just sit there. When you need them, take the generator outside away from the house, go buy a good cord, stretch this thing out, and then run the long extension cord into the house. And then you could run it to a couple things like keep your deep freeze uh, going, also be charging, you know, anytime you're running the generator, have a cord going to the battery charger that'll top off your battery. And you could be running your deep freeze and you could be doing a couple other things. Okay. Then at night when you don't want the generator running, shut that off. And then your battery could run the inverter, which would give you some power that you could watch TV, charge your laptop, uh, be on Facebook. Okay. Kind of have a normal life then. After you got that covered, then you could pick up some solar panels. Solar panels, you could possibly get away with in an apartment if you had a spot to put them. Like, for instance, I talked about in the other video, I had a patio that got some sun. So if I put the panels out, they would get a little bit of sun during the day. I could at least keep my laptop charged. 
probably would have worked. I didn't have it at the time, but that would have worked then. Okay. Solar panels don't put out very much power, but where they work is if they're out for a long time. So the idea is it slowly puts power through the charge controller, which is just a part of the system, into the battery. The battery stores the power so that when you need power, you can bring power out the other side. That's kind of how that works. If you are going to use this more than just once in a while, then you would want to buy more panels, get a bigger charge controller, have more batteries, get a bigger inverter like what I have, okay. If this is something you would use one time very sporadically and you don't really think you want to spend $1,000 on it, maybe one of these would be better than nothing, right? And there's different sizes of kits. I'm not getting into any specifics too much. In the video, I talked about my system is probably over $1,000 right now, but for that $1,000, I'm not hooked up to county power. This is my power. This is everything, right? So if I'm doing laundry, I start the generator. If I'm doing normal day-to-day -day stuff, this generator only runs on laundry days, typically, unless it's really cloudy. You know, if you got a lot of clouds, you don't get as much sun, okay? Now, I don't have an air conditioner. If I was going to use an air conditioner, I'd have to run it on the generator. It takes thousands of dollars worth of panels to run a little air conditioner. That's not a good combination, okay? That's why for a temporary system, I would say go buy the generator first. It's simpler. You just put gas in it, check the oil, hook up the extension cord, pull the rope, or some of them even have electric start, and you got basic temporary power. Uh, a lot of them are rated at, say, half load for eight hours on a tank of gas. I think mine has a two and a half gallon gas tank. So if you go buy a five gallon gas can, you could fill it up two nights and let it run all night and run your air conditioner overnight. Okay. This is a 4,000 watt generator. My inverter only puts out a thousand watts. Right. So this can put out a lot of power, but it's noisy. Right. Um, but it's hard to beat for a temporary thing. So you figure, okay, 400 bucks, a couple batteries. And you know, the batteries just let you do things um, quieter. If you were just once in a while, Run the generator. You know, odds are your neighbors will be mad, but if you give them an extension cord so they can keep their freezer from going bad, maybe they'd get over it. Okay? That's kind of it. I just wanted to get a shot like this because in the video it's really messy and it's hard to figure out what's going on. So if you ignored the generator, power comes in from the solar through the charge controller, goes into the batteries and then comes out of the batteries through the inverter that turns battery power into household power and that's it if you had the generator you could run just the generator go straight across into your house okay and if you had batteries and the inverter you could go generator through the charger and then shut the generator off and then your batteries could run for a couple hours and it would be quiet so you could watch a movie okay the last thing i talked about is a solar generator kit and there's different versions of that uh i don't have any affiliate links but i've seen them on amazon so basically what it is it's the box inside the box it has the inverter it also has batteries it's all self-contained, okay? That's pretty slick. And if you lived in the apartment, when you have power, you could plug it in and let it recharge. And then when the power goes off, you could plug your deep freeze into it or your laptop or whatever. And it's basically this part of the system self-contained into one box. Not a bad way to go. If it was just temporary, this makes a lot of sense. And if you've got one of these and one of the generators together, that would make a lot of sense also. Another trick, and I mentioned this in the other part of the video, if you have a car, you could go out to the car and you could recharge your cell phone and your laptop and stuff like that. You can charge one of these out of your car also. So you could start the car up, plug this into the cigarette lighter on the car, let the car run for an hour, 
and then you'd have power in this. You could shut the car off, walk back into the apartment, and then you could run your stuff for a couple hours that night. Okay, that would work. That's fine. So there's a couple different versions of this, um, and they come down to how much power can they run. For instance, the generator can run every appliance I have, but not all at the same time. And mine is a 4,000 watt. I can easily do laundry with that. Uh, I can brew coffee. Um, if I have like my electric hot water heater for taking a shower, I can run that off of here. But I can't make coffee and make hot water for my shower at the same time. It'll usually kick the breaker on that one. Okay, so if you kind of start thinking, what do you actually need? So if you're sitting here, okay, you just lost power, you found out that, you know, because of the storm, or you lived up north and you had an ice storm and it knocked out a bunch of power lines, okay, you might not have power for a couple weeks, okay? If you had solar, you could keep a couple things running. If you had generator and could get to the gas station and buy gas, you're pretty much set there. Or if you could start the car and recharge this, that would be, you know, one way to go about it. If you had the generator and this, during the daytime, you burn a few gallons worth of gas, re, you know, recharge your, your battery pack. That's not a bad way to go. The last thing, and I don't remember, I don't think this was actually on the video. I didn't really explain it very well. When I'm running the generator, I do as many little things as I can. For instance, I brew coffee. I put the coffee in a thermos. In fact, there's my thermos, right? Right there, close at hand. So when I do have power, I make sure I brew a pot of coffee. I put the coffee in the thermos. That way the next morning, because first thing in the morning when you have a solar system, you probably don't have as much power because you were running the laptop all night. So you've used up all of your power in your batteries. Okay, so first thing in the morning when you really need a cup of coffee, you don't have enough power to make it. So your choice is put your boots on, walk outside, start the generator, or you look for your thermos. If you got thermos full of coffee, great. You just pour yourself a cup of coffee. It's yesterday's coffee, but it sure beats no coffee, right? Um, another thing that I do here, in the middle of the day when I have the most power on my solar, I can run my slow cooker to cook a, a pot of beans or something. And then later in the afternoon, before I start losing power, I'll run the hot plate and I'll make a, a pan, a, I'll, I'll cook some rice, okay? I'll do that a couple hours before I want to eat it and I'll just leave it sitting there. And then by the time it's ready, by the time I'm ready to eat, my rice is sitting there, it's been cooked, it's a little bit cold, but it's fine, right? So take advantage of when you have the power. So if you start the generator, make your coffee, maybe cook your rice, uh, do a few other things that you need to do. Also, if it's a really cloudy day and I don't have very much power, I'll do laundry. That gives me a chance to start the generator, do laundry, and the battery charger is recharging my batteries. That way I've got power that evening. So you kind of plan it out. Now, most people aren't going to do this full time. That's fine. I'm not trying to turn everybody into a bunch of off-grid weirdos. What I'm saying is these things work. I use this stuff every day. So if when you had a chance, if you picked up a few things, you know, this payday, go buy a generator. Just, you know, start it up once, make sure it works, make sure you know how to use it. Then push it back in the back of your closet or something. Um, if you lived in an apartment, maybe put some of this stuff into a storage place if you had, a, had it available, as long as it's someplace you could get to after a storm, right? You could have a smaller version of solar panels, and I talked about this. If you had a couple, you know, smaller, not great big giant panels, but they get panels that are, you know, the size of this whiteboard you know, about the size of your laptop. They don't put out very much power, but they do a little bit. And then you get these battery packs. These are the ones that you can charge your phone with, right? It's got a couple USB ports on it, okay? So as long as you got one of these charged, it's available. Then later on, when the power goes off, you can recharge your phone that night with, with your little brick, 
next day maybe you grab your, your little portable solar panel you go out to the park and you just sit there and enjoy the sun if it's a nice day recharge your stuff come back in now you got enough power to run your phone for that night okay now you're set so you could start off with you know a couple battery bricks and you'd be better off than nothing get a couple rechargeable lights like I talk about in the video they aren't very expensive and they really work well and on a day where you know if you've been sitting there in the dark it sure is nice to light a candle or turn on a light yeah, at least the rechargeable lights don't typically catch on fire so yeah that kind of gives you a, a kind of an overview uh 14th of september about 12 30. all right so weathering your storm every storm is different but if it happens to be something like a hurricane probably it brought some rain quite often one of the biggest problems people have is they don't have drinking water just saying, throw your trash can under your downspout. You might have a few days worth of water you could filter and be better than nothing. Quite often the city water gets contaminated, but rainwater might be okay. So I started thinking about this a few days ago. I talk a lot about my solar panels and I get a lot of questions about them. But what I don't talk a lot about is the generator. And the batteries for that matter. The combination of solar and generator and batteries could be really useful in the week after a storm before they get your power turned back on. So I'm going to probably do more voiceover about this but just a basic generator can run most of your appliances at least one or two at a time. Then it's a matter of how much you want to spend, but you could get a little generator and at least run your TV or your laptop or something, right? The good thing is, is they work well. They're fairly inexpensive for the amount of power you can get. The bad thing is, is you have to keep putting gas, you have to check the oil, and they're noisy, okay? Kind of the opposite of solar. Solar is quiet but it doesn't work very good on days like today where it's really cloudy i am getting some power but i'm not getting nearly as much as i would on a sunny day so that's kind of an issue okay so here's the kind of the secret weapon just a literally a box full of batteries now this looks really messy but if you look at one battery by itself it's not so bad so i'll get a shot of that This is a system. It's not just one piece. It's a, it's a few pieces put together. So you'd start off with the battery. Power comes from solar panels in through a charge controller. That power goes and is stored in the battery. 12 volts by itself isn't very useful for most things. Typically none of your stuff in your house would run on 12 volts it runs on 110 volts if you're in the u.s so what you need then is something like this or like that that converts the 12 volt battery power to 110 volts for your house so you see these big cables come in on one side and i've got extension cords coming out the other side and those yellow wires go underground back to my house once it comes out of this thing it's regular 110 volts power so any typical household appliance will work now on a day like today where I don't have enough solar power I can run the generator and that's something to think about in the week after a major storm you may still have a lot of clouds and rain after the hurricane or whatever your situation is so having the generator lets you run things but it's noisy having the batteries and the solar panels lets you run things quietly and the batteries at night will still work without making any noise and then you can maybe play around on your laptop for a while in the evening and use the power that's stored in the batteries now if it's a day like today where you don't have very much 
sunlight, you could also start the generator, run your load. Like for instance, you could run the deep freeze off of the generator, but using your battery charger, you could also put power back into the batteries. And so that's kind of what I wanted to, to talk about is what I did when I first came out here, I ran the generator about two hours every day. I ran the deep freeze, I made coffee, and I put power back into the batteries. End of two hours, I shut everything off, and then when I came home after work that night, there was still power in the batteries, so I could at least run some, some lights. And from that, I used up the power that was in the batteries. Next morning, I just restarted the generator, and everything kind of came up again. Now, it's kind of slow, but it's a matter of scale. You know, the generator can put out quite a bit of power. The problem is putting it back in the batteries. Batteries like to be slowly charged, not fast charged. It's also a matter of scale by how many batteries you have. So if you've got four batteries like I do, I've got four of the big ones and then four also over here. So if you have four batteries, you can run your TV four times longer than you can with one battery, more or less, okay? but it takes four times longer to charge it. Now, if you had four battery chargers, you could hook one charger to every battery. That's actually a reasonable thing to do. Uh, there's maybe some issues with that, but it would basically work. So that's an idea. So if you were gonna start the generator for an hour and you had four chargers charging four batteries, you would get maybe more power than if you just had one, okay. So even without the solar panels, you could run the generator for an hour in the daytime, take care of some your heavy loads, put some power back in the batteries, and then in the evening you'd have some power. The rest of these are, you know, it's just details after that. You know, you can pick any inverter will make house power from battery power. It's just a matter of size. But you might start small and just test it, literally test it out. A lot of this has been upgraded over the years, but when you think a basic system, this is a Harbor Freight kit. Now I built the racks for them, but one kit will get you four panels. That puts out about 100 watts. I'm not gonna to get too much into details, but that's a starting point. You can put that 100 watts into the battery all day long, and then in the evening you could do something with it. Maybe you could run your TV for an hour or something like that. If you need more power, then you just buy more panels. That lets you pull in more power faster. If you need more power at night, then you need more batteries. If you need a higher load, like for instance making coffee, then you need a bigger inverter. Okay. Now, one, another way to look at it, if you think about your different loads, could you run, for instance, the coffee maker or laundry in the middle of the day on your generator and not try to do it with the solar panels? That makes a lot more sense, right? Also, what I'm doing, this is full time. I live here. This is how I get my power. If I was like for instance in one of the Gulf Coast states that gets hit by hurricanes fairly regularly, having at least a generator would make a lot of sense because I know that in my lifetime, if I lived on the coast, I would get by, you know, hit by several hurricanes, probably, you know, maybe one every year sometimes or different, you know, different years, different places. But having the generator makes a lot of sense. But if you think about it, you don't necessarily have to run the generator 24 hours a day. We're used to having power all the time. But if this is only a temporary thing, maybe we don't need to do it every hour of the day. So this all together is one, two, four kits. I probably have somewhere around a thousand dollars invested in this system right now. I say probably because I don't really keep track of it so much anymore. I've upgraded little pieces here and there at a time. One of the viewers of the channel donated me these panels because 
he had upgraded his system and these weren't compatible with his bigger system so we added that like anything else if you run it it wears it out so this is my second one the first one lasted me about three or four months i think it's about close to its rated life based on the fact i ran it two or three hours every day once i got the solar i used the generator a lot less so this one that i've had for a couple of years now it's starting to wear out but it's lasting a whole lot longer now if i kept it inside it would probably be better because now all the dust sticks to it the sand and everything i don't know how to really preface this i'm just gonna jump in and go with it i i've been living out here for a couple three years now something like that so things i'm doing day to day not normal for most people but at the same time this might be useful for you in the wake of a storm so i'll just go with that um basically on this side i've got a propane stove this is probably the cheapest stove that i could find at walmart that day this is a two burner this is my third or fourth stove i kept having trouble with you know it plug up or whatever or they get broken in the back of the truck or yeah or I'd forget one at home and have to go get another one, that kind of thing. So propane stove, it's got a little filter right next to the toothbrush, I'm sorry about that. So they got this little propane filter that you can use and this is made to use with the smaller green propane tank. Those little tanks, you can do a lot with them. So if you're not planning on doing long-term off-grid living, get a little propane stove, couple of little one pound canisters and you'll probably be fine use it for a while and see how far you can get i can get a long time on one of those just by myself but with that filter and also a hose kit then i can run a full size tank and that lasts so well, that one i put on in april and it's september now okay i don't cook a lot but that's an idea it can last you a long time so if you've already got a propane tank for your barbecue pick up a little stove get that uh, hose adapter kit and you're set all right now the other side of that the reason i don't use very much propane is a lot of my stuff is electric and on typical sunny days out here in the desert i can run the slow cooker i got a hot plate i can boil water for making ramen noodles or cooking rice or whatever coffee maker works fine i got uh got the microwave up here now cloudy day like today no i can't use the microwave i don't use the microwave very much um mostly these or or propane okay and then your you know typical assortment of dry goods canned food all that kind of stuff okay i promise i won't turn this into a cooking show so it's kind of trying to rain outside today it's been cloudy for a few days my batteries are down hovering close to flat so what's the guy to do right can't use power tools. I don't have enough power to run the grinder even today. So we'll make, make pancakes, right? Uh, I promise I'm not a cook. I don't especially enjoy cooking, but I do like eating, so. Since I told you to go buy a propane stove, let me show you that they do actually work. This is Aunt Jemima brand. No sponsorship, no affiliations. Just happened to be what I had left. Um, two things. If you're after a storm and half of your stuff isn't working, maybe you don't have electricity. Maybe you're trying to use up stuff that's in the fridge that's about to go bad, something like that. Here's a good time to actually be cooking. Maybe you can't get out. The roads are flooded. You know, out here, when I get a good rain, the road washes out sometimes. It could be a few days before you get anywhere. Um, if I don't have enough power, I, I splurge and turn the light on just for the camera. Typically in the day, I don't run the light in here. But, okay, I got time to kill, right? It'll probably be sunny tomorrow or the next day, so I'm just kind of working on inside stuff right now. 
So if I spend half an hour making a batch of pancakes, it won't take half an hour, but you get the idea. Spend a little extra time actually stirring the batter to get most of the lumps out. Cook them one at a time because it's a little stove and I only really have one good frying pan. All right, so cooking to me is kind of a waste of time that I should be doing something else. But when you're sitting here with nothing else to do, it's a good time to make a batch of pancakes. Plus a few extra carbs, always a good thing if you're trying to survive. Now the, the keen among you would realize this stove is like way too high. Yeah, it's not bad for the first one. Sometimes it takes me three or four pancakes to get the mix dialed in right and the temperature on the pan, but I actually like cooking with propane better. Um, you get used to it. If you ever cooked with gas, you know, know what I mean. You can very finely adjust it. And I just kind of like it. Um, my house is vented. I am not really too worried about, oh my God, I'm going to burn all my oxygen in here. That is something to think about. Um, typically, if you've got a nice blue flame, propane burns clean. You shouldn't have to worry about uh, carbon monoxide. If you get a lot of orange flame, yeah, you got a problem. Don't use that inside. But typically, propane burns pretty clean. It'll If it's cold, it'll fog your windows up from the water vapor kind of thing. Um, a lot of people have been cooking with propane in their house for their whole life. So, of course, old houses weren't built that good either. Hey, it's not bad. One down, mini to go. Soup ladle works good for her. Pouring them out. But yeah, I think um, something to think about if you're if you're not used to the idea of you've just been wiped out by a storm, you know, if you're, you know, say if you're new to the area or something like that, this could happen to anybody. For me growing up in Canada on a farm out in the middle of nowhere, our power might go off for a day or two. Then when I was in the Navy, I lived on Guam, tropical paradise, beautiful place. They would lose power on the whole island sometimes for days. That was kind of civilized. It was kind of weird. but uh, Plus, then we also had tropical storms and cyclones there. Same as a hurricane, just a different name. But what they taught us was you may not have power for a few days. Okay. So your clock, for instance, yeah. A little throwback here. That battery-powered clock, right? Just because you may not have power. Right now, everybody's got their cell phone, which is fine. But if you're relying on your cell phone, make sure you've got a way to charge it that's not hooked up to the plug-in. Right? So when I talk about solar, yeah, you can definitely charge things off of solar. Just if you're thinking about doing that, work through the whole system. Make sure that you got all the parts you need to do it. I mentioned this on another video. Assuming you have a car, if you sat out in your car for 15, 20 minutes a day, idled the car, charged your cell phone off your car, that's that's a reasonable solution to a short-term problem. Now you're sitting there running a 300 horsepower motor to charge your cell phone. Maybe not the most efficient, but you've already got it. So, yeah, right? Just don't charge your phone for four four days, five days, and then realize your car doesn't start. Right? So think about that. But what they taught us when we lived on Guam, because the island, the whole island could lose power, figure out what do you need for three or four days. Whenever we had a storm and we lost power, usually some of the neighbors would get together and we'd all bring meat from our freezer and somebody would fire up their barbecue and we'd all have a big cookout. You know, because your meat was going to go bad, you might as well eat it. So one person would fire up their grill and three or four people would show up and we'd all barbecue our chicken or whatever we had. Might as well eat it. Um, keep your freezer closed as much as possible because it'll stay cold for a couple days by itself probably. So that was kind of the idea. One day, you know, John would open up his freezer, 
pull out all the meat and he'd cook all his meat and the next day we'd cook ours sometimes you know we kind of go at it like that if it stayed full and closed your meat would last for a few days probably okay so you kind of plan for that the other thing oh these are doing good turn that down just a little bit Gas pumps are electrically powered, like at the gas station. So if you have the power off, you can't buy gas. Also now, most people have credit cards or debit cards. If there's a break in the system, the gas pump can't sell you gas using your ATM card because the phone line could be down somewhere. Okay. So you got two levels of problem there. Maybe, okay, for example, this uh, this is right after 9-11. One of the stories that came out of 9-11, when the World Trade Centers um, came down, some of the banking transactions were going through the World Trade Centers. There was some banks that couldn't process credit cards for a while, like a week or two, because the World Trade Centers were down and that was their main data center. I don't remember the exact details, but that that's something that came out of that. Also, Hurricane Katrina, there was a lot of people that were having trouble because, you know, all their money's in the bank. They could go to a store if the store was open, couldn't use their debit cards, right? So what they told us on Guam, never let your car go below half a tank of gas. That way, you know, it was a little island, so you didn't burn that much gas anyway, but if your car was almost out of gas and then you found out that for instance like the guys in Oregon big fire going on they all wanted to evacuate there's this huge line of cars sitting at the gas station trying to get gas to get out of town what happens if they run out of gas hmm right like actually at the gas station what happens if it runs out so if you had half a tank of gas you could drive an hour out of town and then get gas, maybe, right? So kind of think about that. A lot of situations, if you could get 100 miles away, you would be far enough away from the hurricane or whatever, right? Or at least better. If you were 100 miles away from home and they told you to, or if you, know, if you were told to evacuate right now, could you get 100 miles? 100 miles would easily get you out of a wildfire zone, probably, unless it was like right now, you know, the whole West Coast is on fire, so maybe you'd want two or 300 miles, but you could do a two or 300 miles on one tank of gas. Okay, so all you need is a tank of gas. So if you were at least half a tank all the time, just make it a habit of, you know, I used to always have $20 in my ashtray so if I noticed I was below half a tank, I, if I didn't have any money that day, I would just put the money from the ashtray in the tank, you know. I mean, go buy gas, don't just put the 20 in the tank. That would be funny. Yeah, that would be a clever shortcut. Yeah, just put money in. Okay, so then next payday, put that 20 back. Don't forget. Oh, we're doing good. So, one of my friends on Facebook posted this just recently. And it, I don't remember the exact wording, but which was too bad because it was really well said. But basically, think about all the things you wished you had today in the middle of an emergency that you could have bought for $5 at the gas station last week. Right? And you're like, oh, the scales are, you know, it's like, it's so true. It's like, man, I remember a few times where I've like, you know, if, if my, one example, my motorcycle broke down out in the middle of the desert a couple of years ago. I mean, I'm in civilization, but I could not get roadside assistance to come get me. They're like, no, you're too far out. I'm like, I'm on the freeway. Right. But in my kit, I had couple liters of water on the motorcycle or in my backpack. I had a couple cliff bars. Um, 
I managed to get one of the local sheriff's deputies to come out and pick me up and bring me into the nearest truck stop. Left the motorcycle out there, but he gives me a ride in for the night, thinking that the next day maybe Roadside would come out and get me. So then I just sat at the truck stop. My, my cell phone was going dead, so I had to buy a cell phone charger at the truck stop so that I could call roadside assistance in the morning. Okay. Uh, but while I was there, I would go ahead and, you know, get some food, something to eat. But this was kind of the point is, in the moment, if you're hungry or thirsty or hot or cold or out in the rain, it doesn't take very much to make your situation just a little bit better. And if you're feeling just a little bit better, you can make a better decision. So if you think about it like that, think about your own personal situation. Are you the kind of person who absolutely needs an air conditioner in the summer where you live? Okay. If you live in a place like, you know, I used to live in Austin. And yeah, if your air conditioner quit working, life became just not worth living anymore. It was pretty bad. So you might think, okay, I need an air conditioner. Well, could you buy a portable air conditioner that you could sit in front of and take the edge off a little bit? Okay. Then could you buy a little generator that would run the little air conditioner? Okay. That's a start. If you could just sit there in front of the air conditioner for half an hour and make yourself feel just a little bit better. That's worth doing. Okay. Or could you improvise? Now, high humidity, you pretty much need an air conditioner. But out here, in the desert, a swamp cooler will work really well. I got probably 10 or 15 days out of the year that I really, really need to cool things off. Otherwise, I, I, I adapt pretty well. So rather than buying an air conditioner, I built myself a little crudely made swamp cooler rig that's basically a way of dribbling water onto a cooling mat in front of a fan. And when I sit in front of it, life is more bearable. Pretty easy, you know. And I literally only bring it out two or three times a year, and then I put it away because it takes up room on my floor next to my chair, and I don't need it very often. Um, but let's say, you know, let's say your house has a furnace and, and an air conditioner, or, or maybe a heat pump. Okay. Well, if you lost electricity, what would you do, All right? On the winter side, a little propane heater works really well. And some people will argue with this, but you can pretty safely run a small propane heater in a, in a decent sized room and be okay. You know, maybe crack the window a little bit, you know, and this depends on how cold it really is. I mean, if it's 40 below, you got, you got problems, but you can make it work. I grew up with 40 below. It's possible. Um, but yeah, a little propane heater, or if you had a fireplace, now here's the thing, if you had, if you have a fireplace, do you have any wood to burn? You know, you could start burning, you know, junk mail, I guess, or something. Almost every time there's a big emergency, though, you'll always hear the story of a family that died because they had their generator going either in the garage or too close to the house and all the exhaust from the generator came in and they all died. So, yeah, you kind of want to think your way through that. Um, you can safely run a generator, right? I do it, you know, I used to do it every day. You just put it far enough away so that you don't have your house filled up with carbon monoxide. I guess that was kind of the thought, you know, what I was talking about outside with the solar panels. If you're in a place, now if you live in an apartment, this is much more difficult. Granted, I used to live in apartments. You probably can't have solar panels in an apartment. Probably. Okay. You really shouldn't have a generator in an apartment probably, depending on where you live. 
Okay. So you might have to improvise a little bit. There are products that you can buy. Um, solar generator is what they're typically called, at least what I can think of off the top of my head. I don't remember any brand names right now. I'm not doing any affiliate links on this. But one example is, is about the size of a cooler or smaller, right? You know, big cooler, little cooler, there's different sizes. Inside of this thing is the inverter that changes battery power to household power. It's also got USB ports on it. It's got 12 volt cigarette lighter, lighter style adapters on it. Uh, usually some other kind of connection you can plug it into house power and recharge it. Um, you, if you have solar panels, you can plug it into this thing. And then inside of the box is a big bunch of lithium batteries typically now. Okay. So one idea, maybe you have little storms throughout the year, or maybe you would only lose power for a day or two. Okay. So you could take this solar generator, plug it into the wall, check it once once a month or something just to make sure it's fully charged and then just have it in the closet so that if you did lose power maybe you could use that to make coffee in the morning or to charge up your laptop or you know to play a movie on the tv or something like that right then when the power comes back on Sometimes power comes on for a couple hours and then goes off again while they're working on things. So you could be in a fully functional house that just doesn't happen to be connected to power. Right? You think about that. It's like if random things happen and the substation that powers your neighborhood just blew up for some reason, your neighbor, neighborhood could have no power and yet the rest of the city is still working. Right? So that's a possibility. Um, and then as they fix it, maybe it'll come back on for a while, and then, you know, next day it goes off again. Okay. So I guess the idea is if you had some kind of a battery system like that, you could charge it and get maybe a day or two out of it. Right? Um, the apartment I had in Austin, I had a little balcony that faced west. Not ideal. But I probably could have got some solar power out of that balcony if I would have put panels out there, at least for a little while. Okay. Or maybe you could go out on the grass. You know, there's usually a common area in in the in the apartment. Solar panels, smaller ones, aren't super heavy, so you could carry you know a little panel outside, plug it into your laptop. You know. And charge it up during the day that's a possibility you know or you can you know now everybody uses their cell phone which is good because cell phones don't use nearly as much power as laptops do so you could get away with a smaller system the other thing I probably have talked about these before but you find these on like Amazon, which is your basic little USB battery pack. If you've got a phone, you probably know what these are. All right. Hit the button, lights come on, you got power, right? That's small enough to fit in your pocket. You could recharge your phone for a day or two probably. And if you were worried, turn your phone off when you're not actually using it. You know, turn it on once a day. done so you could take for instance if you went out to your car and started it up and ran it for 15 or 20 minutes you could charge your cell phone and charge that battery and maybe charge your laptop all at the same time and then shut the car off come back inside now you got power for the night you can at least run a couple little lights okay that's something psychological when I was talking about breaking down out in the desert, knowing that I had some water with me and some snacks, 
that takes a lot of pressure off. If you know you've got the basics, you won't die in the next 24 hours, right? Then if you can do little things to distract yourself or to make yourself feel better, okay, some form of heat in the cold weather will just make things a little bit easier. Um, something to eat, something to drink, something to do. You know, if you if your cell phone is not dead, you could at least call your friend, go on Twitter, you know, check your Facebook, do something, right? If you've got music on your cell phone, just having music playing will make you feel better. That's huge. You know, if you're out there, there are times out here on my place where, you know, for whatever reason, either I broke something or it's just day like today or it's really cloudy. I don't have any solar power. Seven or eight o'clock at night, the sun goes down. You know, basically, I got no lights. I got nothing. You know, it's miserable. I mean, even if it's, you know, you're not cold, you're not hot. You know, it's a comfortable night, but, well, what are you going to do for four hours between now and bedtime if you don't have any power? You know, you can't even read a book because you don't have enough power to run the lights. Okay. So you start looking at that kind of thing. I picked this one up at Walmart. Brand is hyper tough. I think it's a Walmart brand. It's got magnets on the back. It's USB rechargeable. It's a pretty big light. So it's actually, you can charge it by USB and it's got a USB out so you could use this to slowly charge your phone. It's not a very good setup. Oops, I'm burning my pancakes. Hang on. This is why you should only do one thing at a time. That's not too bad. Hey, we're getting close. Looks like one more after that. Okay. So this has got the magnet on it. You can stick it to my door as magnetic, for instance. This is actually pretty bright. That, on a dark night, is the best thing ever. I'll just leave it stuck to the door. I've got four of these. You know, now it's like, now you don't feel like you're alone home, at, you know, in the dark. You got some light. Now you can read a book. You can do something else. You don't trip when you're walking around. Plus, it's, it's cordless. You can walk around outside. And this is like a car light. It's pretty pretty bright compared to like, you know, the regular light that's on. Yeah, that's pretty good, right? Yeah. So, these were only, I think, about $15 a piece. I got four of them, right? And they last, there's a low and a high setting. I think on, that was low, I think. On low setting, I think it'll last six hours, four hours, something like that. I don't remember. Quite a while. On the bright setting, it doesn't last as long. Okay. Now, you do have to recharge those. They charge off a USB. You can use the little battery bank to recharge those, though. The other option, and uh, my dad my dad got me this, I think. This, it's kind of funny because it's inflatable. So it would float. That's not really the, the biggest reason for it, but it's got a solar panel on the top. It's got a little loop on the top, and the lights are on the bottom. And you see how much it glows, right? I can hang this up on my ceiling or something, and it casts a nice light all over the room. The nice thing is it's solar powered. So if I remember, next morning I set it in the window sill, catches morning sun, next night it'll work again. Okay. So that by itself, it's self-contained lighting. You just remember to put it outside or someplace where the sun will get to it. And it'll recharge itself, and by the next night, you got at least a couple hours of light. Pretty handy. Uh, hope that made sense. And uh, thanks for watching, and uh, be sure to like and subscribe and share with your friends. Bye for now.